along a lonesome stretch of highway on the furthest fringe of Big Bend country, Bonnie McKinney and Robert Pettis are out to capture some birds. Maybe a little early. And there's one right over there and one right there. There's tons of tracks. We've been trapping birds at Candelaria, Texas. There's one right there. The birds they are after are Gamble's quail, a species found across the desert southwest. Once you get into New Mexico and Arizona, the species becomes much more common. But in our state, it's very limited. The goal is to reestablish these birds further east, where they were once also found. While gambles have fared better than some, every quail species in the state has lost some ground. There are four species of quail in Texas, the Montezuma quail, the gambles quail, the scale quail, also called a blue quail, and the bobwhite. Certainly the most popular and well-known species is the bobwhite quail. But the iconic bobwhite is in trouble. And over the past 20, 30 years, we've seen serious declines across its entire range, including Texas. Fundamentally, conservationists agree that the root cause is changes in the quality and quantity of habitat. Interest in restoring this vanishing native habitat has brought conservation groups and private landowners together at the Atwaters Prairie Chicken National Wildlife Refuge. Nice to meet you guys, I'm Robert. It's really exciting to see this group of folks and, and private landowners just come together for a common cause. Both of these birds, as well as other grassland bird species, require this prairie habitat. Prairie grasses provide shelter, seeds, and insects for birds, but that's not all. Well, this is a sample of, uh, of native grass. This plant contributes to the health of the land. This is the way you conserve moisture. Man has come in and ripped out a lot of this grass, this native grass, and planted what we call improved grasses, which is really not improved, they're invasive species, like Bermuda grass, Bahia grass, and they don't give back to the soil, they take from the soil. To restore native grasses where they have been lost, seed is harvested from a tall grass prairie at the Atwater's Refuge. Well, obviously the best seed to have is to have local ecotypes. Because if it grows here, it's gonna grow down the road. Out here, it's a little blue stem. It's your target plant. We found out that we couldn't do it alone. To have more birds, you had to have connectivity. You had to have one ranch attached another to another. And now we're working with landowners that represent around 30,000 acres in about 10 counties. We know from years and years of research, and it's a very well-researched bird, we know that, that habitat's the key. And as habitat is improved through native grass seeding as well as managed grazing and prescribed fire, not just Bob White benefit. In general, grassland birds in North America have been declining over the past 50 years or so, and it's because of loss of large-scale habitat and big landscapes. We can produce quail. We can produce habitat that makes more birds. We just need more of it. In South Texas brush country, a different kind of quail needs some habitat help. The scaled or blue quail. Scaled quail have declined at about 5% per year in South Texas for the last 20 years. Researchers from Texas A&M Kingsville are on the case. Habitat's looking pretty good here. We've been doing a general scaled quail ecology study on five different ranches. Looking much better. And the landowners have graciously allowed us access to their properties to put radio transmitters on birds and allow our graduate students to follow them and collect the data that they need. There is a lot to learn about this South Texas subspecies. We don't have really any good idea of survival and general nest success. All these general ecology type questions. A lot of this is, is fairly new, what we're finding with this research. Here in South Texas, they're, they're liking the, the thicker brush. Watch that cactus. The rate it's being lost, it's gonna be really important in the future that 
We, we understand what happens when we attempt to restore the habitat to the way it was before the declines. What is already understood is that large areas of rangeland, which once held scaled quail, have been transformed to monocultures. Wow, yeah. This is buffalo grass. Such grass might be good for cattle grazing, but for quail, it's a problem. Quail can't walk through this. This is a pretty extensive barrier, it appears. So part of the research on this ranch is temporarily turning this into this. With exotic grass removed, it will be reseeded. We'll be planting a very diverse mix of native grasses and forbs. Further research will measure quail response to the restored habitat. Beautiful bird. I think they're a symbol of unspoiled native habitat. Another beautiful bird, the Montezuma quail, once ranged across the Texas Hill Country and Trans-Pecos. In the state today, it is limited to some western mountains and only the southwest edge of the Edwards Plateau. When we first bought property here back in 2000, one of the things I noticed was that we had Montezuma quail here. A kind of a relic population here in the hill country. Started talking to some of my neighbors about the fact that we had the birds and what we could do habitat-wise to possibly improve things for the birds. The Hefts and their neighbors work together to improve wildlife habitat on their individual properties. Same scenario, big ranch broke up, smaller places, people were moving cedar, doing things 100 acre, 200 acre, partial at a time, and people seeing and hearing these birds. First Montezuma we saw in the place went right under this bush, and they just froze, and I didn't know what they were. We've done some prescribed burning to try to help the grass cover come back, and uh, a lot of the thick cedar areas cleared the junipers. The birds very much select for that habitat on the left that's been cleared and not for that closed canopy cedar break you see on the right. The birds, uh, you know, preferring areas that have good grass cover. We've had birds nesting right here around the house. Really has done a great job with this piece of property here. This will be point number one that we'll sample here. What we're going to do... Call surveys and further study by Texas Parks and Wildlife and A&M Kingsville will determine if habitat work is increasing Montezuma numbers, but anecdotal evidence looks promising. We really like to see them because, of course, knowing you're dealing with a species that's been so reduced in range and numbers, hopefully together we can kind of help them to recover over some more of their historic habitat. Back in the Big Bend... There's a bunch over there, too. There's a trap full. Gamble's quail are taking the bait. The trapping's going very well. Biologists work quickly to collect the birds. Three. Once the birds come in the trap, you don't want to leave them there too long. All right, 14, not a bad start. You're checking traps, you're taking birds out, you're resetting the trap. You've gotta be actively driving up and down the road, checking traps on the fly. Here's one. The team gathers the birds okay. and collects data about each quail, fitting them with identifying leg bands. I love these birds. You're the most talkative. Bonnie McKinney works on the land where these birds will be restored and originally proposed this cooperative project. I'm the wildlife coordinator at the Adams Ranch, which is actually called El Carmen Land and Conservation Company. We were really wanting to bring the gamble quail back. Uh, historically, they were found 10 miles up the road at the Black Gap. Both location and extensive habitat improvement have made El Carmen an ideal reintroduction site. Through the work that we've done landscape-wise, opening up the floodplain, preventing the erosion, putting in waters for wildlife, created some very good gambles quail habitat. 88 birds. So, with a suitable home awaiting. That's a lot of birds. And a full load on hand. It's time to hit the road. They're kept in the transport cages overnight, and then the following morning, they're released into the new habitat at El Carmen. As soon as they're in place right. and given an opening, 
the birds eagerly return to their former range. Everybody flew strong. That's great. No injuries, no mortalities. So that's wonderful. And there's more good news. After two seasons, the birds are raising chicks. Knowing that we're working on a project that's helping bolster population of the gambler's quail, it's exciting. There is much yet to be done to improve the state of quail in Texas, but there is also hope for a brighter future. We've seen the results. In some of these areas where we're doing this work, we're hearing them in areas where we haven't heard them. One thing is already clear. The state of quail depends on the state of their native habitat, and improving that will depend on people working together. Our birds have to have places to go. We're losing habitat every day. And by linking these properties up, I think we can make a, a big difference. Unfortunately, quail don't have any say-so in the matter. And it's gonna be up to us to take care of those who can't take care of themselves. This project was funded in part by Wildlife Restoration Fund.